Hi guys, I'm Eric Voss, and there is a new trailer for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. And yeah, I know, new rock stars have switched back to using a blue screen, which means you at home can do all kinds of weird, embarrassing stuff with this footage. Hey, what are you doing? Stop. Anyway, this trailer gives us our first look at Kurt Russell's character, Ego the Living Planet, father to Star-Lord Peter Quill. Plus, more shots of Baby Groot that dare you to make animated GIFs out of them, and more vivid colors that make the rest of the MCU look like an ashtray. Or, uh, the color of my shirt. So, in this video, I'm gonna explain everything about Ego and all the other new stuff in this trailer, skipping over the footage that I've already covered in our previous trailer breakdown. So, let's get started. Hope you're ready. It'll be here any minute. Is that a rifle? You don't know what a rifle looks like? It's just swords were your thing and guns were mine. But I guess we were both doing guns now. I just didn't know that. Well, that's intense. So, like in past trailers, this one opens with more shots of this battle with the Abelisk. That's the interdimensional monster that the Guardians have been tasked to defeat by Aisha and the Sovereign early on in the movie. So, the Abelisk feeds on the Sovereign's energy supply, which I'm now guessing might be what these things are. We also finally hear Gamora speak in one of these trailers. You don't know what a rifle looks like? She has this fun back and forth with Quill, giving us a taste of this movie's sense of humor. But then, the subtle detail that I really like here is this device that Quill is using to detect the Abelisk. This is a Mattel electronic football game released in 1977 and it looks like Quill has modified it from a crappy handheld game into a radar like energy detector and I'm guessing that this thing was in Peter's backpack when he left Earth as a kid along with his Walkman and mixtape. Alright let's move on. I see it within you. Fear. Jealousy. Betrayal. Okay, so in this section, we hear that same great song choice from last trailer, Fleetwood Mac's The Chain, with Baby Groot apparently playing it from Quill's Walkman. Groot is wearing this awesome little jumpsuit here, but in all the other shots we've seen of him in this battle, he's not wearing anything. So either this shot is from like a different scene, or it's possible that James Gunn shot this scene specifically for the trailer, which is something that he's been known to do. And as Aisha lists all the negative qualities that she sees in the Guardians, I like how we hear jealousy over this shot of Gamora a glaring at Nebula. So these two half-sisters hate each other, with Nebula feeling jealous that their father Thanos loves Gamora more than her. We also see new shots of Rocket's confrontation with the Ravagers, with Yondu's Yaka arrow hovering in front of Rocket's face. But notice how Yondu's fin isn't there yet. I feel like this could be early in the movie, shortly after the Ravagers are sent by Aisha to capture the Guardians, but before Taserface overthrows Yondu and Yondu joins up with the Guardians and escapes with them. Anyway, I'll come back to the shot, but let's move on. It is all due to cleanse the universe of this weakness. You know, they told me you people were conceited douchebags, but that isn't true at all. Dude, uh, I'm using my wrong eye. <laughs> Okay, so here we see that this swarm of ships chasing the Milano and the other trailers belongs to the Sovereign. You can see their golden faces in the cockpits there. So here they're forming this grid, and I wonder if it's gonna be like that huge net formed by the Nova Corps ships at the end of the first movie. We also get some more context on Aisha and the conceited mindset of the Sovereign. They want to cleanse the universe of all these weak qualities, and yeah, a superior race wanting to cleanse everyone else? You're not looking very good there, Aisha. And yeah, I love this bit with Rocket dissing the Sovereign and winking at Quill with the wrong eye. Dude, Rocket, you're surrounded by Sovereign. It doesn't matter which eye you wink with, they're gonna know you're being sarcastic. I think they're gonna cleanse you first. All right, moving on. Groot, put your seatbelts on! In this section, we see that it is impossible to have a shot of baby Groot looking uninteresting. Here, Groot is eating candy, like M&Ms or jelly beans or something, out of what looks like the flower pot that he initially grew out of. Also, this might be the space candy that was advertised on Quill's shirt. Like, I know in my very first teaser breakdown last fall, I pointed out how people online translated that alien language on his shirt to Gears Shift. But according to Chris Pratt during set visits, it's just like a candy logo. Like maybe one of the Guardian's past missions hooked them up with a bunch of free candy and merch. Also, it looks like this gravity snare thing that we've seen Rocket use on the Ravagers actually has a few moving parts with the darts flying out of the trees at them. And I'm guessing Rocket laid a few booby traps behind to thwart the Ravagers and then maybe they aren't enough to overwhelm them and he ends up in their custody. I don't know, we'll see, let's move on. So we're saving the galaxy again? Yep. Awesome! We're really gonna be able to jack up our prices for two-time galaxy savers. Yes! OK, 
Okay, so a few things here. Now that we know these are sovereign ships, it means the sovereign will be part of the showdown in this odd looking cavern place, which I've speculated in the past might be the core of Ego the Living Planet in planetary form. Also, we saw the shot of Gamora with her sword in the first teaser, but now Baby Groot has been CGI'd into the shot. There's also this slightly wider version of the shot of Drax showing Gamora hunched over in the background, possibly injured. You also might have noticed that the last trailer had Drax saying, screw you, spaceship, instead of yeah. So I'm guessing that line is from a different scene. And I liked Rocket's line here about saving the galaxy a second time, mostly because, as many of you have pointed out, despite all the footage we've seen, we still don't know who or what the Guardians are saving the galaxy from. Like, we know Aisha is one of the villains, and they fight the Abelisk, and Taserface leading the Ravagers is a problem for them. And sure, maybe Ego will be threatening the galaxy in some way, but James Gunn still really hasn't given us firm answers on any of the big questions about this story. So it'll be nice to walk into this movie without having pieced together every little scene, which is pretty much all I do these days. There's also this shot of Quill and Gamora dancing, which I'll talk about in a bit, but for now, look at Gamora in this next shot. We saw her using this massive gun last trailer, but now we see what she's shooting at. Her sister, Nebula, who we saw flying the ship in the other shots, trying to gun her down. So this confirms that once again, the tension between these sisters is gonna get really nasty. Let's move on. In this section, there's an interesting shot of Drax using the pulse rifle that we saw him grab in the earlier shot. And notice how he waits for it to charge before he fires. Also, his body is covered in this bluish texture. Like, I'm wondering if that's a bubble so he can breathe in space or something that enables him to fly. And it may be from a different scene, but the editing here makes it look like Drax is firing at this massive ship larger than anything else we've seen. And I'm wondering if this ship belongs to the real big bad in this movie, whom we haven't seen yet. Maybe whatever character Sylvester Stallone is playing could be connected to this. And then after my favorite part of this trailer with Baby Groot waving at Gamora mid-battle and her just saying hi, we get this interesting shot of Mantis. Now look at the background here. It looks like that same cavernous place that we've seen before, but those coral-covered tentacle pieces are moving as if this whole location is forming around her. To me, this could be more evidence that this location is actually the inside of Ego the Living Planet and that we might be seeing the transformation process of Ego's human form turning into a planet core. All right, moving on. Sometimes the thing you're searching for your whole life, it's right there by your side all along. You're right. All you do is yell at each other. You are not friends. No, we're family. Except maybe her. So here we see a beautiful master shot of this colorful planet surface. Now, I'm not sure where this is. My first instinct was that this is the surface of the colorful underground place that we saw, making this place possibly the surface of Ego. Meanwhile, apparently James Gunn has said on Twitter that it's the planet of the Sovereign, but he might have just been correcting this person's awful spelling. Now, wherever this is, it seems to have a strange emotional effect on the Guardians. Like, remember Quill and Gamora danced in this earlier shot, and even though there's been chemistry between these two, I just don't see that happening naturally. Also. Drax and Gamora gaze at these floating bubbles, and they have the same childlike wonder of the Clintons with balloons. Remember that was a thing that we laughed about? So it seems like this place might have some intoxicating effect on the Guardians, transporting them into a new dreamlike state. We also see the surface of this other planet exploding, which also feels like it could be the planet form of Ego. We'll see. I feel like everything we're seeing in this trailer is Ego, just zoomed in. I also enjoyed this joke with Nebula calling out the Guardians' love-hate relationship with each other, and then Drax summoning his inner Vin Diesel with his... No, we're family. I don't have friends. I got family. Now, it's ironic how he excludes Nebula from that family when she's really the only one in the group who has actual family ties with another in the group. Unless Mantis ends up being half-sister to Peter Quill, but really I don't see any resemblance there. All right, let's move on to this final section with the reveal we've all been waiting for. After all these years, I've found you. And who the hell are you? I'm your dad, Peter. 
Okay, so let's talk about the man, Kurt Russell, Ego the Living Planet, taking a human form who conceived Peter Quill with Peter's mother, Meredith Quill. So I've talked a lot about Ego in these trailer breakdowns. Quick refresher, in the comics, he's been both friend and fro, and fro? Friend and foe. Mostly he's just self-interested and super moody, thus the name Ego. So we really don't know what role he'll play in this story. And I like how for the Kurt Russell version, they gave him this majestic beard, similar to the facial hair shape that the planetary version has in the comics. And then notice this ship that he comes out of with Mantis. We've seen this ship location show up in a bunch of other trailers, noticeably in the trailer when we first met Mantis. And I think it's interesting that the white and yellow colors and general shape of this ship make it look like a giant egg. Like I feel like that had to be intentional. Maybe implying that Ego in his human form hasn't hatched yet. And when he does, he'll transform into his true planetary self. And finally, I'm thinking this father-son reunion will happen close to the midpoint of the movie because check out Nebula here. She's still handcuffed and her left hand is a claw, like a crude replacement from when she got her hand severed in the first movie. Like I'm guessing she uses that to like pick oranges or something. Meanwhile, in the awesome group shot that we've seen before, she has a new hand. So I'm guessing that takes place later in the film, maybe even the final shot, and that this new hand was created for her by perhaps Ego. Okay, that's everything I noticed. And let me know what you thought about this new trailer. What do you think about Kurt Russell and Ego the Living Planet? And be sure to check out my other three breakdowns of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 trailers. Like I know I skipped over some of the stuff in this trailer and it's because I already covered it pretty comprehensively in one of the other videos. And if you like this video, please hit like and subscribe to New Rockstars. And if you really like us, you can contribute to us on Patreon. Big thanks to all of our current patrons, especially Kelly Hopper. You can hit me up on Twitter at EA Voss with any thoughts or theories that you have about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 or follow New Rockstars on Twitter at New Rockstars for info about when our videos are coming out. Okay, thanks for watching. Seriously, again, get it out of here. Okay, bye.